Hi there, this is Kathy Crow. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for joining me here at the Crow Cottage. Um, this is in Springfield, Missouri. Boy, it is a beautiful day here today. We had a lot of rain, you know, this last week, and it's made the lawn actually start to green up. And this week, I got a little um, red bud to plant in the front yard. It's pretty little. <laughs> you know, he's probably... Yeah, it was supposed to be between four and five feet. So um, when you include the roots with that, it, it it's a it's pretty small. But actually, those grow pretty good. So if it does well, it's a flame flower red bud. It from my window here. So um, I am looking forward to it being a little bigger, so I can see some birds flying around because they all are in the backyard. Anyway, that's not stamping stuff, and I'm really here for stamping stuff. But um, you know, if you know me, plants are a big part of my um, love of life. So anyhow, oh, there goes Jeff. Where's he going? <laughs> He's going somewhere. I thought I heard him sneaking around my door just before I started. And he was probably going to, he probably wanted to say goodbye and where he was going, but didn't want to bother me. He's such a nice guy. Anyway, there he goes. He's going somewhere. He is not teaching today. So it he keeps me busy when um, he is home. So today I'm going to do Ballet Beauty. Um, this is a really cute stamp set. And when I saw it in the catalog, I really wanted to do it right away. Now, both of these are gonna be great for the spinner, but I'm actually, and, and there's this, you know, the spinner inside. It's it's a cool card. Um, spinners are really fun to do because there's just, oh, come on, why? Oh, sorry. Like, why are you giving me grief here? I was all connected and no, no, ah. Okay, I'm sorry, this is gonna take a while because for some reason I've got my, hi Freddy. Uh, you know, why is technology so difficult to do? Because it, for some reason on my phone that I'm trying to see you guys, like as soon as I put this, I can see that you're there now. But as soon as I put this camera down onto it, I have to look at my little, little phone because it doesn't show me comments anymore on the big computer. And that was problematic. So I have to find it on my little phone. And it was making me install again. And now my clock is gonna go. At least it's only one o'clock. So we only have one chime to get through. Ah, I think we're open and going. Excellent, sheesh. <laughs> so complicated, just for you know, almost absolutely nothing happening. Okay, so anyhow, Ballet Beauty. Now, wouldn't the spinner card, Freddie, do you have this little rhino? Okay, bye-bye. See you later. Yes, do your resting, but thank you for saying hi to me. I appreciate it. Um, prayers again for all of you guys. Um, okay, Rhino Ready. He's so cute. Now, this is a limited time offered thing, so it'll be gone soon. So just don't delay. If you want it, you'd better get it because it has dyes. That's another reason it's going to go really fast. But any of these would be really cute on the spinner card. <clears throat> if I have time for it, I might get to it. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and get started because this is going to be like a lengthy thing. Oh, my glasses. They are so dirty. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I really should have checked that before I got going because um, they are so dirty that I do have to actually stop and clean them right now because otherwise I won't, <clears throat> I won't be able to see. And I have a cough for some reason. Hmm. Allergy season, I suppose, because it is so nice outside. I've been spending a lot of time out there. We've got our mowers came and did our first mowing this last week, and it sure made it look a lot better. I didn't even think we needed them. And then after they came and went, I was like, whoa, it looks like a lot better out there. I'm so glad that they did that. And they were really careful to go around all my little bushes because I've got, like, they're they're this high. <laughs> All my little bushes that are um, all 
protected, she said to put a little fence around each one so that they wouldn't mow them down because they're pretty small and I want them to grow right in the grass. So they only have like a little circle of soil around them. And um, anyhow, so I'm going to try to put my camera down here to see what's going on. And there goes one of our neighbors. Oh, this is a different neighbor walking a dog. This is a big dog out there, huh? Okay. All right, it is always interesting what I miss when I think I know everything and I miss so much. Okay, I'm gonna have to move my board just a tiny bit to make sure everything's fitting in the wrong direction. There we go. All right, so make sure we're all squeak, squeak, fitting in, okay. All right, I think we're all set. This is what the, this is, if you want to order anything, please use the host code if, uh, host code if it's under $50. Um, if you or are ordering a bigger order than that, then I will want to make sure you sign in with my, your name and as my customer and all of that, um, because you will get your stamp and rewards if it's $150 or more, but you'll get more than that from me too. So, but I do have to know where to send these things. This ballet beauty is $22. I have no idea what our Rhino Ready one is. And I didn't put that out because I, I assume he's still available. But these things sometimes sell out pretty fast. Now, one thing I'm going to do with this ballet beauty, this is what the card's going to look like. Um, I have it on Pinterest, so you might have already seen it. It When you do it, you're going to want to... After you've got it all completed, make sure you wind them up really good before you close it and stick it in your envelope. Because if you wind it really good, then when the person opens it, it spins really well. But it once it's finished spinning, it, it stops. So that's why you, you want to wind it. Now, you can see I've got the mirror image on it. So to be sure that you um, know how to do mirror images, get out your one of your silicone sheets. This is what we're going to be using today to do the mirrored image for this Ballet Beauty. This is a really cool card. I really like this one. I think I saw the the actual dimensions from this for this one. I think this is a Sue Moore one. I'm not a hundred. I didn't write down who I got it from, so I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it, I, th I'm thinking it was a Sue Moore one. So, um, if so, then uh, you might want to check out what she did with her spinner. Cause I'm not sure what she put on it and I know it would be super cute. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to use my colors today are going to be gray granite and petal pink and so i've got my gray granite cardstock you're going to want to have at least two sheets and um your gray granite ink pad that's all i'm going to use for colors um i do have this petal pink gold edged ribbon i think this is probably a retired ribbon i'm sorry but i am using my retired things i don't get rid of it i use it and i would really encourage you to do the same thing and then this is paper that's available right now it's brush stroke specialty paper now it is absolutely gorgeous in the catalog it just doesn't do it justice as pretty as it really is. Uh, when I got it out and first started working with it, um, there's only two sheets per color. And I was thinking, dang, I'm gonna have to order more because I'm gonna wanna have this paper around longer than just this catalog session. It's, um, it looks like, um, I'm not gonna say silk. It looks like silk or like damask or uh, taffeta, but it has this, it's called brush stroke because it really does have a brush stroke, you know, pattern and texture to it. It's not a thick texture and it's definitely paper. It's not cardstock at all, which is nice when you're layering it on, like I'm gonna do several layers in this card. And the fact that it's paper means it's gonna lay really nice and not be hard to manage. So um, cardstock, our cardstock is much better than a lot of the cardstock that you buy in the craft store. That cardstock is a very lightweight cardstock usually. And um, our cardstock 
is really heavy, which means it can make very good boxes and and the cards that you make are gonna be pretty substantial. They they hang together well, they fold nicely, they they don't they're not so flimsy that they flop around, you know, and don't look very good. You can do a whole lot of things with them, but if you're layering a lot of layers, obviously, if it's heavyweight, it's too much. It gets to be way too much and it'll make, make a really heavy card to mail. So I was thrilled that this is paper, not cardstock. I'm down to my, la la today I'm gonna use the last sheet of the Metal Pink because it's my favorite. But the other colors that it comes in is this wonderful soft succulent. Oh man, it's so, so pretty. So I hope you can see the shimmer. I hope you can see the texture because um, that's the part that I like. The, sh the shimmer's nice, but the texture's nice. And then also, it has this night and navy one. Um, that's kind of unusual. It's really elegant. Oh boy, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my night of navy yet, but I'm not wasting it on my ocean ones. The ocean stamp sets are really cool all on their own. They don't need a whole lot of extra oomph to them. And I want, when I use this Night of Navy paper, I am going to want to make sure that it stands out in the project because it's just, the paper is too pretty to cover. So that's why I'm using it in this project because for this project, I'm, oh, I am going to cover it on the cover with my design. But on the inside, I have this all on the inside so people can get to enjoy the luxuriousness. <laughs> Am I going nuts on it? Yeah, sort of, but um, it's pretty, okay? It's really, really pretty. Now you know why I like cards. It's kind of one of those things that you either like it or you don't. Um, I might seem odd to some people because I like it so much. I mean, one of the reasons I really like doing Stampin' Up! is because um, it's a blessing to me. It's a blessing to other people too. The people who I give it to, um, my friends that are my stamping friends. I don't have a lot of friends now that I've moved and I have my stamping friends. So that's really fun to be able to share that with them. Um, it helps me control my weight. It's another reason I really like doing this because at night, if I'm working on something, I'm not eating instead, which I would be. Believe me, I have a really hard time keeping the pounds. Oh man, you don't even want me to go there. The pounds just come on no matter what I do. So that's just some of the reasons that I really like it. It keeps me from buying plants too, because man, this is the season. I would be going nuts on plants if I was not busy also stamping. So that's good. It keeps me from buying. I don't have gardening friends here because you know what? My stamping friends are pretty perfectly happy to just do stamping, you know, online. And if they would come over, if they could, they would. They live most of them far away, but you know, for the ones that I have that are, are here, they would be happy to come over. I, in fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show this to you really quick before we get started. I've been playing with my, um, that welcome, welcoming home stamp set. And I got out, this is just for giggles. I got out my old, our wind, warm welcome. Was it window welcome, warm welcome? I forget and used the stamps with that, with the window, and then our really old, do you remember our old door? Um, what's it called? Uh, at Home With You, that's what it's called, At Home With You. And it had this door that opened. Well, now I have from our new welcome, um, warm welcome door set, I've got stuff to go inside it, so that's cool. Plus, it has the numbers. And I am actually going to do an open house. I'm hoping to get some of my craft people here to come and be more familiar with me here at my house. So I am going to do that. And so uh, this is my little invitation for it. I used our warm, our welcoming window stamp and the flowers that come with that. This doormat is from that at home set though. Isn't it so cute? And then the door is just the perfect size to do my invite stuff. And I think that's from um, one of our wedding invite stamp sets. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there to show you because I knew you would appreciate it. And, um, and I hope that you like that. Okay, so today's spinner card. What you 
you need are two pieces of eight and a half by five and a half. So it's just your standard, standard thing, but it's got to be eight and a half by five and a half. So I'm thinking about it, make sure I've got eight and a half here, and then I'm going to cut five and a half here. And then those are the two pieces you're going to use. And so I said that I need this. Um, this is going to go, This I'm going to need a part of this for a mat later, but I don't need it right now. So I'm going to set that one aside. I just need this. So we're going to score each one at the end of it. So you're going to just lay it like this. Okay, it's kind of like, um, oh, like a fun fold. This is a fun fold. It's a really easy one too. Okay, so now score it at two and one eighth. So find your one eighth mark. Okay, two and one eighth and four and one quarter. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. Okay, same thing. Two and one eighth and four and one quarter. Okay, now these are going to, um, we're gonna fold these eventually, but right now, actually I am gonna, fold them right now. We're going to die cut the center because this, this fold part that I'm folding right now, this is going to be the center of your card. Okay. So we're going to do, one's going to open like this. This will be the front here. So this is the middle of this. This is my front piece. This is going to be my back piece. And we are gonna wanna, we're gonna glue eventually, we're not gonna do it yet, but we're gonna glue this together right here. Okay, we're gonna glue that together and then we are gonna cut through this whole, whole shebang with the die. Now, if you do not have a big circle die, I have a big circle die. Um, that's actually not even a Stampin' Up one. Stampin' Up did do a big circle die a long time ago before I started. So um, I don't have that one and I didn't buy it. I just bought um, some cheap circle die, but it works. It's a really big one. It doesn't have as nice a stitched edge because it's not a Stampin' Up one, but it does, it's a big one. It has It has a lot of circles, but the stitches aren't, now this one is super big. I the 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 thing is is that her arms come out pretty far. So I experimented. I got our biggest stitched rectangle um square die and I used that to see if the big square one will do it and it will. Her hands kind of bare this one's kind of hitting a little bit. It works. It's just not as good. So there are some other big ones that we've done in the past. If you have a very big die, um, it would work. But, um, I, you know, I would just experiment with it and see if you don't have a big circle. Because this, this circle die, let's measure it and see how big it is. It's actually um, four and three quarters of an inch in diameter. So that's pretty big. That's, that's a pretty big one. Okay, so, oh, don't lose that score tool. It always slides out if I don't move it to the side. Okay, so we've got our big circle die. And what we're going to do is I want to I wanna glue these together because if I, I could, of course, cut them separate, it's going to be hard to get through my cutter because I'm doing it this way. But on the other hand, if... If I do it separate, I'm afraid that they're not. It's not going to line up perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue these together. Um, before I do, though, I'm going to just eyeball it and make sure that this fold is going to close the way I want it to. It looks like it is. It looks like I I measured it pretty accurately today, which is a miracle that I did because oftentimes that doesn't happen. Okay, so we're just gonna glue this together. I'm putting a pretty good amount on there and then I'm gonna let that dry because I don't want a whole lot of glue on my die. <laughs> 
that's not a good idea to do that. Okay, let's do it like this. Make sure I get it. Get it together, Kathy. I am a little, I've got my glasses on. I'm gonna take those off because for this kind of work where I kind of really have to see what I'm doing, um, I can't have my glasses on. I've got too good of an astigmatism going there so that when I actually need to see close, I can't, I can't have my glasses on. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure that butted up perfect against all of those edges. So now it's perfectly glued together and we'll be ready to go. Okay, you know what I forgot though when I did that? I think I forgot to do something because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna need, I am gonna need to separate these when I put in my thread, but I think I'm gonna work on that after I've got this cut and then and then we'll talk about that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece with the die cutter. And can you believe, ladies, that we've got the new catalog is coming out so soon? Oh my goodness. I'm not really, I don't know, am I, am I ready for it? I kinda am because I'm sort of done with the catalog I've got. I've got, I've done everything I really wanted to do with it. And um, I can work on tons of stuff with the old catalog still. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I shouldn't say I'm done with it. So I'm not really done with it. I never really am done with it. But on the other hand, I love getting new stuff. And there's new in colors coming and they're gonna do a whole nother color deal. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna cut it like this. As you can see, that would be way too big. I really just need, I need it to be wide, so I just need it to be cut through like this. So I'm gonna have to run this through several times to make sure that it cuts cuts through, you know, all of those, those layers. And I'm gonna bring it up. I don't really need it to be too close to that fold. And I'm just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'd like it to be in the center, but I'm not measuring these ends to make sure that they're perfect or anything like that. I'm making sure that my top and bottom are out of the way though. I definitely don't wanna cut through that. Okay, so we're, let's get it a little closer to the edge. I don't need it to be too far out. And and then we're gonna cut and see how it goes. Oops, I'm shifting it. I don't really wanna do that. It's harder for me, I work from, when I'm doing the cutting machine, it, it's towards me. So when I'm working at the side like this, I'm a little, a little bit more wary about what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's tough because it's a thick one because it's got all those layers. Ah, keep going, you can do it. I'm gonna have to shift this and get my body against it to get it to really go. It's, now, you wanna be careful, you don't wanna ruin the tension on your machine. So if it's this hard, I would normally, I think, get out of it and get a different plate in and, and work with a different plate because this is pretty hard for my little machine. <laughs> and I am pretty careful with my machine. I really like it, so I don't want it ruined. And I got through the front, but it's still not quite going over the back of it. Normally you don't have, you know, it's not that hard. Let's look at it and see what's happening. Let's see how much of it it's cut. Okay, it's cut enough that I can see and I can do this side now. So I think I'm going to. It didn't really get here yet, but I can come back and get to it, okay? So I'm gonna remove that and put it right here in this spot where I could see it was trying, trying to cut through there. It's just very hard because it's got so many thicknesses. And so I'm going to say it again, don't generally don't force this much weight, you know, or thickness through 
your your cutter. I wouldn't do this kind of a project very many times. And I think I in the future when I'm doing this, I'm going to cut them separate and then just you use the one that I've already cut to make sure I place it properly on the other. In fact, I might do another one just to show you what I'm talking about. Now that I've already cut through, um, it's going through, of course, much better this time on this side. Let's check it out, see if it's cut through yet. It did on this side. But let's do this one again. Now I have to feel it to make sure my stitches are going to match. Okay, you want to make sure you're, if you've got a stitch die, you want those stitches to match because uh, I, I might save those pieces. The stitching's not going to show, you know, on my card. So if I don't get it matched, it won't matter. But if you're going to save your pieces, then you want it to match up. Okay, that's gonna be as close as it's gonna get. I'm not gonna worry about that because I probably am not even gonna use those pieces anyway. Okay, now that was a fair amount of work. Let's do it again so you can see how you can do this without it having to you know, be that problematic. I am gonna, I ended up having, you know, all of these pieces, that's that's why. Here, let's run this right here, because that is still, not really. In fact, I don't really even need it like that. I'm gonna go like that. Yeah, we do, I do need that out of there. We want all of that. So let's go ahead and cut this as well. Right like this. Now I'm going to be careful though. I don't want to cut that part. I just want to cut this part that still is not quite out of there yet. Let me get it in its groove. Right in the groove. And just as far as I need. I don't need it to go too far. There we go. Got a little over it. Let me snip that. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we've got our circle part the, again, make the folds that, that they originally, you know, had. And there is this little overlay. Um, if that bugs you, you can clip it. It's not really going to be a big deal. Make sure your, your edges are coming together nice. And then we can burnish these once we're sure that all the folds are folding properly. Then we are going to use our thread. And we, that's why this is open just a little bit. It doesn't matter. I'm kind of wanted it to be that way because we're going to need to put our thread in there. Okay, so I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. And then we can get going on the stamping and the assembly. It's pretty easy once you get this part done. Um, the rest of it's going to go. My paper got all messed up with that, didn't it? Okay, I'm going to look and see if I hardly noticeable. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do is just let's, um, let's do our, our stamping and get that part done. I'm going to get some white cardstock out. Find some. And we're going to just stamp with Ballet Beauty. Now you're going to, this is how you're going to do your silicone sheet. Make sure it's nice and clean. It's, it, it attracts, it attracts stuff. So it always feels like it's just, I don't know, it always feels like it's a tiny bit grimy. My knit from the workout place. The guy at our workout place, he gives me a mint every day. He sees me. He doesn't always see me, but when he does, it's his way of telling me, good girl, keep going. 
it's a little humiliating, but, but I take the mint anyway. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to take your mint, even though it is a little humiliating. You think I need candy to keep coming back. Okay, so take your, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this in pieces because I don't need all of it. I want to save the parts I don't need. So let's cut this in half. And I'll save this side, this for another project. And we're going to cut this in half too, or four and a quarter. Okay, now we have our two pieces because um, to do the, uh, to do the, this um, mirrored part, I don't want to, I don't want to, it's going to be a little messy. Okay, here we go. So get your pieces ready right there. You've got the piece that you're going to be taking and pushing down on top of your stamped image to get it impressed on there. Okay, I've got that piece ready, cleaned off. Here's my, my silicone sheet all ready to go. It's clean. Okay, I've got this. This is something a friend gave me that I really like for this sort of thing. I'm going to use, it's, it gives really nice even pressure um, on my bigger stamps. And when I'm doing this, it really makes it better um, than just pushing down with my hand. You could use a block and get the same effect, but I would, I've done a block and I wiggle it and do stuff I don't want to do. So anyhow, what you're going to do is you're going to just take the image that you want to be spinning. Um, I am using this one because she's a little narrower than this one. Her leg sticks out pretty far. So this one's going to go on the cover and this is going to go on the inside. But if you have a bigger card or a bigger area, you could have her spinning. She'd be really cool too. But we're going to use this one. So let me grab her out. And... We're going to ink that one up, and we're going to stamp the image right here. I'm going to make sure it's inked really good. Now, I did just re-ink my, my pads, which I have to be careful not to ink up too much. When I do that, I tend to get too much ink. Don't wiggle. Make sure it's nice and straight. I'm going to, let's do her right in the middle here. Okay. So we got her good and stamped on there. And then we're gonna just lay this right on top and press down. I'm gonna use this because it's gonna press everything on there really good, nice and even and not shifting my cardstock around. Okay, and then lift up straight and there's your image. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna clean this off. That's all we're doing with this. That's how you get your mirror image. It's so easy to do. I, um, it only takes a little practice and you're gonna get really good at it. Now we've got her. Now we're gonna use this one and just stamp that one straight on because we need another one. We need two because you're gonna glue her together with that thread through the middle so that she can spin. Now, you can see this is a much nicer impression than my mirrored one. It's true. The only way, you know, I don't know how you can get an even sharper one. I suppose if you wanted to, you could use your pen and sharpen up the lines. Um, maybe I'll give that a try. I haven't done that because I just don't, you don't need to. When she's spinning in there, you see the side that's not as well impressioned, if you want it, that's the right phrase, you know, but when you wind it up and they open it, she spins. So it's like, well, just hope when they close it, the better side comes up, right? <laughs> because if it does, it doesn't really matter, does it? So it's not that big of a deal. But if you're um, like a super perfectionist and you have to have everything just absolutely perfect, then I suppose doing a pen thing might make you happy. You do have to be careful. This is an artsy stamp. Those artsy ones, they go out of the lines. They're not perfect. They're not really supposed to be perfect. But her lines could be, you know... They could be a little bit stronger. So if you're gonna, if you want to do that, well, 
let's pretend that we want to. I don't, but we're going to pretend that we do. And, um, and I'm going to grab out, I think I've got, I probably have a gray granite in here. Now, if I don't have a gray granite pen, I can't do it. But let's look here. I've got basic gray. Huh, do I have gray granite? I'm not sure that I do. Because you need a stamp and write marker. You can't, you can't use, don't use an alcohol pen. Alcohol pen is going to be too soft and smudgy. Here's um, Smoky Slate. There's Basic Black. Boy, I don't know if we even carry a stamp and write marker in gray granite. It, we might not. I thought we had like every color, but I'm sure not seeing it in my collection. So we might not. Nope, there it is. Okay, so we do have gray granite. You just have to keep hunting for it. Okay, let's pull this down. Okay, oops, sorry. And let's see if we can make those lines a little bit sharper. I'm going to use that fine tip and um, and just go right over those lines. So, and I'm looking at this one to see where the stronger line is because it's not necessarily where that um, fuzzed out part is. Okay, I'm not going to do a lot of this. I'm just showing you what you can do if you want to just make this a little bit cleaner, a little bit sharper looking than your image will be, you know, when you do the mirrored thing. You do run the risk, like I just did there, of not having the lines go matching exactly like they're supposed to. That's a little bit of a risk, but it's a pretty slight one. I do want her legs just to be hmm, a little bit more defined. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to have nice muscly legs like this? Kind of. I don't know. Do you want nice muscly legs? I sure wouldn't mind it. I think I'd much rather have a muscly stomach. I do get tired of having to lift my stomach to dry under it. I mean, seriously, these are the problems skinny people don't even know anything about. <laughs> okay, there's that line sort of is fuzzed as it gets nearer where the knees are meeting, so I don't want to do too much there. Just a little bit around her little tippy tippy toes. Okay, there. Okay, I think I think that's about it for that part. Now, this is the part too that just looks like oh, it's a little, little bit on the fuzzy side. So we'll just make it a little stronger, of an outline. And there's nothing you can do to avoid this that I know of. I mean, I've looked at other people's mirrored images, and it's it it ends up kind of being the same thing. Um, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not definitely not going to mess with her face. I've learned just leave leave that alone because if you start dinking around, this is going to end up being fatter than any ink I've got down there, and it's just not going to work. Okay, now her her suit is just a little darker, just a little bit, like that. Okay, now that, there you go. Now you can see I could sh shade it a bit more here. Um, I could try to do her face. I'm not going to, I'm afraid it would totally, I'd totally screw it up. Um, it looks like maybe some of this could have used some more outline, but I'm going to leave it because I'm afraid of what's going to happen if I get too, too good. Now, you do have to fussy cut. Oh, I know, I know. I know you don't want to, but some things are worth it. Okay, so you do have to fussy cut. Now, on the one that I don't want showing, I'm going to go really, really right on, right on the, the lines. 
Now the one that's gonna be on the top, I'm gonna to give just a little bit of extra so that I, I know I can line them up really well. And one won't show over the other so much. The one that shows over the other one is gonna be the better one, not this, not this mirrored image. Today when I was at the, as I was leaving the exercise place, um, you know, um, there was a, walking just ahead of me, far enough ahead that I could slow up a little bit so that I didn't get to the e exit door at the same time. Because guys are so polite here, they always have to wait for you and open the door and all of that. Well, this kid was, it, it may, uh, he looked like high school, but Jeff said now he's probably college if he was there at that time. <laughs> but he was like incredibly young and he was so cool. You know, he was walking along with his cool guy swagger. And I have been around enough kids that I don't want to go through the charade of having him hold the door with a rolling eye or worse, to have him just let it slam on an old lady. You know, I don't want him to be embarrassed, in other words, or me either. So um, I thought I'll just slow up and um, and let him go, he can pass through the exit well ahead of me so that he does not have to even worry about the old lady walking along behind him. Then as I got closer, I saw, oh, the door's being held open and what an adorable child. There was this little, oh, she was probably only five or six years old, but she was so cute. She was leaning up against the door, keeping it open. And a lot of people do that for the elderly people. There's a whole lot of, you know, I mean, we're talking coming in on their walkers and, and some people, you know, are coming in for physical therapy too. So they're um, a fair number of people that come through those doors that need help. So it's not uncommon to see people holding the door for other people, although it's a automatic, you, there's a button you can push, you know, you know, for automatic too, if you're really struggling. But um, anyway, so I assumed she was holding it for the, but no, it was for her mom and like her little three-year-old, two-year-old maybe sister who was like pretty far away running up to the front. Oh, they were so cute. Well, when I saw this little girl, I thought, I wonder how this guy is going to react because I mean, this little girl's going to hold the door open for him and she's so cute. Surely he can't possibly go by this cute girl, this cute little girl and not say thank you or hi. Although I'm telling you, he, I, I could be totally misjudging him, but his whole swagger and demeanor and the tilt of his head, <laughs> his chin, you know, is up his eye. He's not making eye contact with anyone in the place. What he was just too cool to be there so it was funny. He went out the door and I saw him kind of looking at the, and I thought, oh, is he, is he going to be polite? Oh, he couldn't stand it. This little girl was so cute. I saw him turn and smile and say thank you to her. And I bet it made her day because he probably, you know, when I was that age, that a guy that that's that age and attractive would have been like, whoa, that's nice. You know, that that guy would say hi to me. So that was really nice, and she was so cute. Of course, she held the door for me, too, and I told her thank you. And I told her mom as I went by her, you, what nice sisters, you know, having a great day. It was cold this morning, so they were all ready to have a great time and not minding the fact that it was pretty frigid. When we left the house, Jeff said, you know... It is really cold out there. It got pretty frosty last night. And this is late enough in March. I was thinking, I am so glad I'm not gardening like I was last year. Otherwise, I would have geraniums on the porch that I would be afraid of freezing. I would have pansies out there that would be wilting, not dead, but wilting because they'd gotten so cold the night before. Or you're in there trying to, you know, cover things or bring them in. And, oh, it's... It's nice. I do. I don't miss gardening at all, just because I still get all the joy of it without the work of it. 
a little bit of work digging a hole for my little tree and all is plenty. I'm really enjoying it. When Jeff and I walked through the garden, um, this was it just yesterday? It was. It was just Sunday afternoon. And um and he said, Wow, those are all cleaned up. I said, Yeah, the guy the look at those piles. The guy was said, Yeah, he was he got all the grasses all trimmed, everything all cleaned out. It looks so nice. And some of the piles are still laying there. It was just he said he was just waiting for him to come and haul them away. And I just was thinking, it is so sweet to not be doing all of that work. I have felt a twinge of guilt occasionally when I see women that are older than me struggling along in the rose garden. Or one time um, I was biking and I went by where there are a big clumps of trees and it's in a more wild area. So they don't all, they don't have to, you know, do too much cleanup. But the guy had his walker. He dri First of all, he'd driven on the paths, which, except for the little golf cart things that the workers in the park actually drive around. <laughs> Nobody drives, but he's a volunteer, I'm sure. He's probably, you know, been volunteering for a very long time, so he can do what he wants to. He had driven his little sedan up to this spot through the park on the path. <laughs> he was parked on the grass, but... <laughs> Um, not blocking anything, but he had his walker. He, he had his walker, but he had a rake and he was raking up leaves and to big piles. And then he would stop and he had his, it was a regular walker, but you know, you could flip it and then you have the seat. And um, so he had it, he had his walker flipped so that he could take a little break and sit and, um, <laughs> Oh, I thought, man, I should be volunteering in this garden if they need volunteers so bad. But I bet he's done it a long time. I'm sure he thinks this is great exercise. It gets him out of the house. Um, who am I to take that away? So I'm not, I have not volunteered. Maybe one day I will. Um, I've, you know, I haven't volunteered with, with, planting groups. I thought about it and I checked into it one time in a church. We, we, we weren't a member of this church, but there was a large church that we were thinking of joining at one time in, in our old place in Washington state. And, um, they had a garden club. So that's one of the things that I thought would be really fun to be part of this church and be part of their garden club. Well, I kind of checked into it, man, you know, they were kind of snooty. And um, I thought, wow, I I don't know that I like to be part. And then we had some friend, a friend of ours went through the um, master garden class in that same place. And he said, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty snooty. <laughs> Wow. Um, he didn't use that word. He is too tactful to use that word. Um, I forget what he said about it. But anyway, but they were snooty, okay? So I was like, ah, I don't know that I want to be part of gardening groups. I'm not so sure that they aren't. Some, I know some of them. I've known many, and they, of, of the individuals in various ones, because there was a one of the major rose, for those of you in the Tri-Cities, the Rose um, Society, uh, I don't know if you know the name Jim Campbell, but he was one of the founders, I think, of that. And, uh, oh man, he had so many roses in his garden. Uh, and what a great guy. He and his wife, such neat people. So there are places that that's not the case. But I just am afraid I'll get stuck in the one that's snooty, so... And then I'll be stuck. You know, once you volunteer, you're pretty much stuck. You can't just quit. <sighs> All right. So I this is our old silver thread. This is not in the catalog anymore. But I, you know, they, they it came in a whole spool. It's really thread. It's like filament. And you could use fishing line filament for that, this too. But that would be a tiny bit thicker. This is actually going to work really well, but I am doubling it up. So I pulled it out. I'm doubling it up. I've got a pretty long strand. I want to make sure it's really long because I don't want to be ha struggling here at the end trying to make this work. So I'm actually going to make it way longer than I need to. In fact, I just, because I did that, I just ratted it up here. That's the trouble with this thread is it, it does, it tends to, 
it doesn't play very nice with itself and it'll it'll tangle all up if you're not careful with it. Okay, there, I think I've got it now. So I'm gonna clip that and then I'm gonna double that up if I can find the ends. It's so fine, I can hardly see it and I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, this silver thread is really nice for these spinners, but um, it is, it's kind of, it, it tangled right there. Got like a weird loop there. So I'm going to want to make sure I glue that tangled part in the middle of my, my dancer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my thread on here. I'm going to tape it so that I can glue these two pieces together and keep that tape inside nicely. Okay, so I just have a piece of scotch tape. I actually am gonna have to make it a smaller piece of scotch tape. And um, you want it right together. You don't want it, I don't want one piece Stick into the side. Okay, there we go. I think I'm gonna tape it again in another spot because I do want it to, to lay nicely, like right in the center. I want it to be right in the center of her head. I'm gonna take just a tiny, tiny piece of my Scotch tape. Let's tape it right there on her head. Oops, did I get it or is it on my finger? <laughs> oh, there it is. My goodness, this is such a tiny piece of tape. I can't even see it. It's stuck to my finger nicely, but it's not. I might have to get my tweezers to work with this. This is too hard to do. Let me grab the tape with my tweezers. There we go, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing with her foot. Just take a tiny piece of my tape. And so that it's, <laughs> where is the tape? Oh, it is on there, excellent. I actually got it on there. Oh boy, fun, fun, fun times. <laughs> Uh-oh, what did I do? I just did something on the side here and messed up my video. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, good, we're back. Oh, there we go. Okay, all right. So, anyhow, Jeff was at the exercise place right with, or I guess it was when we were leaving coffee and um, he happened to get behind somebody who was just going super, super slow. I mean, so slow. People hear speed. I have been speeding more than I ever have because um, we actually had become very, very diligent about never speeding in Washington State. We lived in pretty close to, as those of you in West Richland know, there's some speed traps there. So you kind of have to be really careful. And um, so we'd just kind of gotten used to that. When we came here, we were shocked at how, what speed demons they are. And we've kind of acquired that habit. So now I just go five miles an hour or over everywhere. I don't even consider that speeding. That's pretty embarrassing to admit. It's true though. And um, because I'm serious, people here, they speed um, 10, 15, 20 miles over the speed limit sometimes, seemingly without fear. I do see people pulled over to the side of the road by the police once in a while, and I assume it's for speeding, but um, not a lot. So people just speed, but they, they run red lights like crazy. And the funny thing is, is that there are those things that are like super reckless to Jeff and I. The running a red light is like super reckless. But, and we would never do that. But, um, you know, there are other things that they're super, super cautious with. So uh, when they come to a four-way stop here, I mean, they're seriously stopped. And they do not go 
until everyone is out of the intersection. Nobody goes, you know, a couple at a time. They are like uh, not moving. So everybody's sitting there staring at each other, wondering who goes next. A lot. It's very frustrating for those of us who are used to just, if, if that person's turning and I'm turning, we just turn, go at the same time. They don't do that here. So um, it is just interesting. Well, this guy was going so, so super slow. I was thinking, Jeff, get around that guy. And he wasn't. So I thought, fine, I'm going to get, or actually, I didn't even see Jeff was in the line. It was a line of cars, and I knew somebody was going slow up there. So I got out, and I started to go around, because it's a two-lane there, you know, well, four-lane, two each way. So I started to go around, and it's a big street. It should be 35 miles an hour. It's probably 40. And, um, okay, now, let me stop chattering here to tell you what I'm doing. So what I want to do is I want to uh, fasten these securely in between. It's going to have to be very, very secure. And, you know, so what I should have done actually before I taped it together is I should have tied it. I kind of got to jab, jabbing there and forgot that I actually wanted to tie it to make it really tight. But I didn't tie it and I've got it on the line so instead of tying it now, I am going to just tape it on the inside and then glue it. And it's going to be glued right in there. But you want to make sure it's going to be glued really, really, really good because you don't want it to go in anywhere. Okay. So, um, yeah, I should have actually, I should have fastened it before. So that's why this is open so that you can actually loop it and tie it. So you would normally loop it, tie it, and then glue these together with your tied end in there. Now, I didn't do it that way, so I'm going to have to just tape it. And I'm hoping for the best. I'm it, To have the right tension, it's got to be super tight. In fact, I already know I'm not going to do that because that won't work. Since I've got two pieces, I'm going to take them apart and I am going to tie them in there. But it's better to tie. Now I'm going to have to tie two pieces, one here and one here, when if I had just done it the right way, um, my I would have had my one tied knot in the middle of her stomach. Okay, if that makes sense. But All right, so I'm going to clip here. And let me get all the glue off my fingers because to tie... A tiny, tiny thread with sticky fingers is not easy. This is going to be problematic all on its own, I'm sure. Okay, so we'll put one here. We're going to want to tie that knot so that it shows, so it's on the inside here. I don't really want it showing, per se. Okay. Oh, this is going to be the fun part, is the tying <laughs> it's so this filament is so so small I am sure you can even hardly see it okay so we're gonna tie and then as I tie I need to make sure she's long enough but not too long okay so right about there let's do a knot and this is going to be, I really wanted the double strength because I wanted to tie it tight. And because this filament is so fine, you know, it'll break if you do too much pressure. So I'm going to have to be a little more gentle than I normally would. Okay, so that's tied pretty good. I think I'll do one more pass through here just to make sure that knot holds really well. And then I'm going to tie it right there where the... Clip off my ends, and then I'm going to put a piece of tape to fasten that there. Hmm, that seems to be pulling down a little bit, but that's okay. All right, there we go. So that's there, and now we'll want to do that with this end as well. Jeff's back. I wonder where he went. <laughs> I'm so nosy. 
Okay, now you want to tie it, you know, so that it's taut. Um, I do really want her to be on the other side because she's the better side, but oh well. This is kind of the way it worked out, so we're going to live with it. Okay. So anyway, when I saw Jeff was in the line behind the slow guy, I thought, well, I don't want to zip, you know, zip, zip, zip in behind him. Well, we we're almost zipped out and around that guy. And here he is zipping along. I'm stuck. And then I'm just praying, please don't turn off our street. Of course he did. I know on the street I've got to turn down. But seriously, no, no, no. Don't go down golden. But he did. And so anyway, when I got home, I said, did you see that? How come you didn't go around that guy until the last minute? And then I got stuck behind him. It's like, oh, I didn't even know you were behind me. <laughs> uh, he's so funny. Okay. So, now my little knot is going to show because I did it wrong. Normally, you would not have your little knot showing, but because this is that filament, you know, you can't even see it anyway. Now that we're done with that, now we can glue this together. So you want all of this to glue together. It's going to make it nice and strong. There's, I'm, I have done a spinner before where I didn't do all of this. Um, and I think I had just a piece cut and in anyway, it, but it wasn't as strong. This actually, I, I really like this. Um, I like this doubled up. It, um, it really reinforces the spinner nicely. So anyhow, I'm going to, um, when I did it, I was not sure that I was going to like this as well, but I do. It's really, really good. You're going to like this too. It's going to go good with that. I, like I said, with the little rhinos, it'll be really cute. I think the little rhinos would be fun spinning around in there. Okay, now, now when you get it glued, make sure it's you push it really good and... I am going to get clips to make sure that that fastens together really nicely, and then we'll work on the other part. Okay, so I want to make sure I want to make sure this is glued really well. So let's put just a little dab in. Make sure that's glued really good there. And this side, too. I didn't go right to the edge because I, I hate having glue ooze out. That drives me crazy because it always oozes out and then it gets all over my hands. But you really need it to be right there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the DSP for this. Now, I didn't do an area to write but um you would want to cover this with a space to write i suppose but it's so pretty i was planning to just write right on top <coughs> excuse me it's um a light enough pink that you're going to be able to do it now the dimensions remember oh <coughs> excuse me oh my goodness mm. are like your standard oh my i've got a like mega sneeze happening here i'm not sure why but anyhow so we've got four and a quarter on each side by five and a half. So we want to cut our DSP. Um, I'm going to do it. Let's see. Did I do it at the edges or did I leave? No, I did it right at the edges. So we want it to be four and one eighths and five and, and three eighths. Okay. So let's, let me move this up a little bit. I'm going to set this aside. Let me throw away my extra twine or thread rather. All right, so we want to cut this, and it's so pretty. You want to 
you don't want to waste this. So let's make sure we're not cutting more than we need. Um, but I'm going to need three pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it this way. And, you know, I'll end up having to cut another one. So four and one eighth. Okay, we'll go four and one eighth. And I'm going to do one more four and one eighth. This is how I ended up using that other <laughs> entire, you know, part of my paper. Why I only have this tiny bit left is I've used it a lot. And now it's going, going, going. And I think I've already ordered. I'm pretty sure I ordered one more package of it, though. I'm... It's, it's, um, this would make wonderful wedding, you know, cards and anything for a girl. Okay, so five and three eighths will go there. Five and three eighths and five and three eighths right there. Hang on to your little strips. Five and three eighths. One more. And then you've got another extra piece. And then we're gonna just glue that. We're gonna glue one here. Let's see if it's gonna to be too wide. Nope, that's perfect. I think that's done. I don't know if it is. I'm gonna do the insides and then we'll we'll work on the the front and then that one will be done it's so cute I'm really enjoying it all right let me look here really quick oh dang I don't want to do that uh-huh okay all right what did the coffee report to the police oh this is cute these are my dad jokes and this is a really good one <laughs> What did the coffee report to the police? I just saw um, there was a woman who testified in front of, uh, not a committee, um, but she was a lawyer and she, they, she was testifying, questioning the critical race theory <laughs> that was going um, in Minnesota. And, oh man, she was sharp. Man, was she good. Anyway, her name sounded like coffee. That's not how you you spelled it, but it was a re really pretty name. I thought that was so cool. Okay, anyway, what did the coffee report to the police? This is a really good joke, and I bet you might be able to come up with the answer, so let's see if you do. Okay, so here's this one. This side, you can write on there. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. And this side. What did the coffee report to the police? A mugging. <laughs> mugging. That one, if you're doing it with kids, you could do it with, um, you know, cocoa. You wouldn't have to do it with coffee. Okay, and this side right there. Let's move you down. All right, now I'm going to take off my clips. Make sure it's not sticky on the end there. I did forget to burnish it. Let's do that before I put on my DSP on the front because you do really want to, you do want to burnish those lines. Right there. And there. Okay, there we go. Now it's closed. I do see it's over there a tiny bit, but it's it's not bad. And at least it's all even on the front and sides. Where's my 
Oh, here it is, right here. So we're gonna put this right here, and then we are gonna stamp her on white with, um, I've, I'm doing enjoy each step, but all of these are um, great little sentiments. This one's, so I'm gonna do enjoy each step, and then on the inside, if you wanted to write it, you could do this one, one step at a time with the journey, when, until the journey becomes a dance. That's really cute. Um, if you've got, you know, somebody who's going through anything that's um, difficult, um, it could help them to think about it being a dance rather than just being a challenge or an ad or an adventure. Sometimes things that are, we call an adventure don't feel much like an adventure. Um, I suppose a dance it wouldn't either, but a dance can be very complicated and painful, even though you are enjoying it. If anybody, I was not a dancer, but I watched my daughter do enough tap dancing to, to see that um, people who do dance, a lot of it is kind of painful, but it's worth it at the end. Okay love this paper it is so pretty okay now we're gonna do on white that we are gonna cut out with a stitched rectangle okay we're gonna just stamp her with gray granite with the sentiment I think I'm gonna do it after I've cut it out let's cut it out first and then I think I'll be able to center her better um, not this one is it this one no, it's the one just bigger than that, I believe. Let's see. I want to I don't think it's this one. No, it's not this one because I want I want the one that's under that. This one would be fine for the gray mat. That's going to go This is going to go on top of smoky slate, but I or I mean gray granite. But I think instead of cutting it with a die, I might I want it to have a really small border and that's going to be I think a little bit bigger border than I really want. So I'm gonna just use this smaller one. I'm gonna cut that out over here on the side and then bring it back over here to you. I think you already saw me struggle along with this cutting machine today. I don't think you need me to bring it over there and struggle along with it. Actually, that was very easy because there was no struggle. It went right through. All right. So now we're going to take... The, that still doesn't look like the right size, and it's not. What did I use? I thought I used stitched rectangle. Huh, that's funny. Let's see how big she is on here. I might have to go a size up. Because that doesn't look like... I bet you I used my... Um, I used something else. No, nope, she's going to fit perfect. She's smaller. So I might be able to use this one then with my gray granite. Hmm. All right, let me grab a piece of my gray granite and we'll cut that out. And then I'll have it ready in case I want to use that. What did the fish say when he hit the wall? Oh, this is so funny. This is not a good joke. This one's not a good one. I wouldn't do this one. No, that's a pretty good, pretty good border. I like that. It's a little bigger than the border I had here. But I think what I did is I took a stitched, I took this one and I cut two I cut it two times, I bet. No, that looks like, that does look like a match. Okay, I'm gonna cut this the white with this, and we're gonna see. So now I'm thinking I did do it with this bigger one. This 
one would be a joke that would teach your kids to swear, so you don't want to do this one. What did the fish say when he hit the hit the wall? I almost gave it away. Okay, so that is the one I did. So it's not the biggest stitched rectangle, but it's the the second one down. Now the the biggest one though will be way too big to do with your gray granite, so that's why I just cut it instead of using the stitched one I just cut it we're gonna hang on to that later and I'm gonna use this because I want her to be kind of at the bottom and have plenty of room for that sentiment right there all right gray granite You can guess what my fish, actually you wouldn't, you could write it because it's, it's, uh, it's not a swear word when you're using it as in a facility that holds back water. <laughs> All right, so here's the gray granite, your little ballerina. Isn't she cute? And then we want to do the sentiment, enjoy each stamp. I mean, enjoy each stamp. Yeah, that would be good. Enjoy each stamp. I think I want this one that don't, says that. That would be a really good one. Enjoy each stamp. Oh, boy. Okay. Now, to make sure that I like, because I'm, I don't want to mar my piece. I'm not going to cut it out. It's already cut out. So what I'm going to do, just to be sure that I don't screw this up, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to lay it right here, lined up on my grid, so it's squared up, and have, and I'm going to put my block on it, so it's all squared up. So I know this is all squared up. So it should be nice and straight on. We're going to see if it is. It should be. Got it inked up. Enjoy each step. Voila. It's sort of like putting the whole the ball in the hole evenly on the green. It seems easy, you know. The green's not very big. You're you know, it's flat to a great degree seems like it should be easy to just put that little ball right into the hole so so easy that's the way it seems with just putting a little sentiment on on a piece that you've already cut out it seems like it should be easy but I don't know about you but so many times I go to do it and then there I am all crooked just a tiny even the tiniest bit crooked is still crooked so what I am going to do, I'm not going to glue this down and cut it. I am going to just lay it on it and cut it because then I am going to, when I glue it, I can shift it and make sure it's perfect because I want just a tiny one eighth of an inch edge. And uh, instead of cutting it ahead of time, I'm going to eyeball it here and see where I want those cut lines to be right there. Put it on the card again with the distance that I want it to be on the edge. Line it up where I want that cut line to be. And now it should work pretty well right there. So I don't even have to worry about measuring. It looks like my cut corner is messed up there. I don't know what I did if I turned it or what. It's not, not perfectly straight. I'm not sure why. Because I had, remember I'd cut that paper with my scissors. It looks it's kind of crooked right there. I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to put ribbon around this anyway. The ribbon's going to hide that to some degree. Okay, right there. 
All right, here's my next one. Is this pool safe for diving? And then the answer is it deep ends. Huh. Is this pool safe for diving? It deep ends. That doesn't really make sense. So I don't really like that one. All right. And then you're going to take your ribbon and just wrap it around here and tie it in a bow. I've got lots of ribbon. I shouldn't have oh, That's way too much. Okay. What are you doing? That. And like that. It's very slippery. All right, now once you get your bow tied, then you can kind of fix it. Because of course it never ties the way you want it to, ever. Let's do it like this. And like, oops, no. <laughs> there. Okay, there we go. Now it's laying better. And we're going to bring this down a little bit so that I have my ends going where I want them to. And then we're going to put dimensionals on here. Let's make sure it's opening right. Good, good. And we're all set. That one's done. Almost. Isn't it cute? I do really like this one. It's pretty. Oh, dimensionals. Where are you? I thought I had a big pack out. I've got my black ones. I need to... I want to hang on to those for Halloween. I'm not sure how many more of them I have. Let's put that away. I don't want to use that one. I guess I must need a new pack out. Maybe I used the ones up that I had out the last week. I must have. I know I was using the end of something. Before you stick those on, make sure your ribbon is right where you want it. And then stick those on there before it shifts around anymore. If you see a crime happen at the Apple Store, and this is, we're talking computer Apple Store, okay? What does it make you do? What? What does it make? No, no. If you see a crime happen at the Apple store, what does it make you? Oh boy, this isn't a, uh, the, if If the lines are hard to deliver, then that means it's not a great joke. It should just be pretty easy. And I'm not great at it, but on the other hand, this one's just not a great one either. But you never know, you might think of it. You're not going to. This one's like too apple-y. Too much of an apple computer nerd type joke. Okay. There's the cover. Right there. Isn't that cute? Now, I do think that my, for my first one, I wanted it to be really super simple. And the ribbon is nice. It just, it seems like it needs um, green right up here. Doesn't it? Just something. We've got our, this is our art, artistry blooms. There's some little tiny sequins. Let's see what one looks like there. Oops. What happened to it? It's gone. It's probably stuck under my thumb. I, how many of you lose your bling, <laughs> like under your nails? Happens to me all the time. 
Mine aren't even th usually this long. It, it still happens, even when they're not very long. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I kind of like it. I kind of do. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think I might like it without better. All right, there we go. And then we do have, I was hoping I might have time to get to another fancy fold that I did with this, but I don't. Do not have time to do it. So we'll just have to wait till the next one. So the joke is, if you see a crime happen at the Apple store, what does it make you? An eyewitness. <laughs> like, just an eye and witness, like iPhone, eyewitness. Okay, you know, that one, I just do think that one's kind of lame. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching, sharing, liking my videos, all of that stuff. I do really appreciate it. And stay tuned for that new catalog. It is coming in May 4. You will be able to see and order new things. Now, if you are a demonstrator, you can see it in just a couple of days. We get to see all of the new things on March 29th. Boy, that's going to be fun. Going to be new colors. Shh, you're not going to tell anyone what they are. You'll wait until May 4 when everyone gets to see what the new colors are and how they are revamped because they are going to be revamped. Exciting stuff. So anyhow, remember when you do this card, just don't forget to wind it up really good, wind, 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 so that when, um, you know, slip it in there in your envelope, then when they open it, she spins really nice. It's a cute card. Super easy to do. So have fun with that. Enjoy it. There's so many, any stamp that is a action kind of one will go really well that way. And you can just use that mirrored image technique and, um, it's pretty easy to do, especially when you're doing just one color. This stamp set uh, lends itself really well to just doing one color and not coloring it, but you can color her too. And just stamp it on a card and color it. And um, I haven't done that yet. I'm probably gonna do that next. So maybe that'll be our next project. Have a great week and stay warm if it's cold where you are. Hopefully, it's not too bad. It's warmed up, I know, and I am going out on a bike ride. Should be fun. So I will see you next week, and um, happy stamping, and God bless. Bye-bye.